Radial tunnel syndrome is compression of the radial nerve as it travels through the forearm. It is characterized by dorsal forearm pain, and injections, EMG, and MRI are all important markers that help make the diagnosis. Notably, this diagnosis is quite controversial as there are overlapping signs and symptoms with lateral epicondylitis. And this controversy has stemmed from years of research. Radial tunnel syndrome was first described in 1956 and then later expounded upon in the 1970s by Lister. Early studies by Lister and other surgeons demonstrated excellent early results with decompression of the radial nerve. However, in the late 90s, studies were not as promising, specifically in a study by Cobb et al., who performed a retrospective review of 110 patients, all having undergone decompression of the radial nerve. They reported only 60% of good to excellent results with an average of 41 month follow up. Even today, there remains equipoise regarding the efficacy of an isolated radial nerve decompression. Given this, the authors recommend an exhaustive workup, including injections with long acting corticosteroid, as well as short acting anesthetic like gladocaine or bupivacaine, as well as EMG and MRI before indicating oppression for decompression of the radial nerve. And this is a case of a 28-year-old man, and he presents to clinic with years of ongoing dorsal forearm and elbow pain. Generally aggravated by gripping and twisting, he has failed years of conservative management, including NSAIDs and physical therapy. He did not respond to injections into the lateral epicondyle for a presumptive diagnosis of lateral epicondylitis, but did do well after injection over the radial tunnel. And so he was indicated uh, to be brought to the operating room for decompression of the radial nerve with a presumptive diagnosis of radial tunnel syndrome. And here is our incision marked over the dorsal forearm, centered over brachioradialis and ECRL. And here is a depiction of our anatomy with a drawing showing our interval between ECRL and brachioradialis. Also nicely shown here is the superficial branch of the radial nerve, which we're able to trace backwards to PIN. And you can see the crossing vessels here, which uh, can cause a compressive neuropathy uh, over the PIN as it dives down into supinator. We began with an incision over the dorsal surface of the forearm. We carried our dissection down a fascia. Here we identify brachioradialis and ECRL, and our goal is to create an interval between these muscles. We open the fascia with knife and then begin our blunt dissection. The goal here is to find the superficial branch of the radial nerve which lies beneath the muscle belly of brachioradialis. And while it is not depicted well in this video, we are able to identify the nerve and track it proximally to find radial nerve proper, which brings us to our posterior interosseous nerve. Here we have found the PIN and are releasing adhesions tightly surrounding the nerve. Great care is taken to carefully release the adhesions and also small vessels that are crossing over the nerve. Further dissection and decompression proximally. We then used a vessel ligature clip to 
clamp off some of these small crossing vessels. After fully decompressing the nerve, we turned our attention to ECRB. Uh, depicted here is our tenotomy of ECRB, which we found to have some ratty degenerative changes. By releasing ECRB, this exposed the supernator muscle and allowed us to visualize the nerve entering supernator. At this point, the nerve did appear more degenerative, flat and white, uh, and overall unhealthy appearing. And so we continued our decompression. And here is a diagram of the anatomy just to show by releasing ECRB, we are able to expose supernator and have a better look at the nerve as it dives into the supernator uh, muscle belly. And this is our final stage of decompression, just decompressing the nerve proximally and distally as much as we can safely do. Once we were happy, we irrigated the wound and close subcutaneous tissue and the skin with nylon sutures. And this is three months post-op. So you're gonna go wrist back and forth. Yep. And then you're gonna bend your elbow back and forth. Excellent, okay, that's it. As you can see, he is moving really well. Uh, he reports excellent pain relief, starting to return to all his normal activities as he continues to strengthen his form and work with physical therapy.